In the last episode, we talked about the importance of having a lead management process in place somewhere globally that is setting lead sourcing, uh, doing lead scoring, setting data normalization, tracking all of your funnel stages, and ensuring that all of that happens in a sequential process before sending somebody off to the sales team to be processed. This process is going to improve data integrity a great deal. It's going to improve the success of your lead routing processes, and it's going to ensure that the right person gets sent to the right salesperson as quickly as possible. So what we are going to be walking through today is building out a lead management process controller in HubSpot. Now, don't worry if you are utilizing Marketo, the, co the core concepts of what we're covering today will be applicable in a Marketo solution. And there will be a future video after we get through HubSpot where we will build this out on the Marketo side. So stay tuned for that. Without further ado, let's dive in. All right, so what we have open here is a centralized process in HubSpot where we are going to be walking through each, sta each stage of the lead management process. This is a centralized controller that is built out to ensure that you have the right order of operations running through your system. For example, if lead scoring depends on the right job title and the job title needs to be normalized into a job level and a job department field, for example, we're going to want to ensure that that data gets normalized from the job title field before it enters anything for lead scoring. Otherwise, if all of these things are triggering off in independent triggers, you risk that all of the data that is dependent on each other fires off at different times. And then as a result, what ends up happening is that you get somebody, they don't become qualified for follow-up, then they get a job normalization process that runs, and then they get scored again, and now they've already been routed to somebody, but now they're going to trigger into a ready-to-work lead. It's very, very frustrating for our teams when they're not getting the right data all at once. So this process really does solve that. What we're looking at here in the first stage is we are looking at the lead management status field. And this is really central to everything that we are building out in this process. The lead management status field, it's a drop down field that you're going to create in HubSpot. And it is going to indicate what stage of the process has been going. And so we are going to set lead management started when this whole process starts. And then we're going to have a lead sourcing workflow that gets triggered. And that's going to say that it started and that says that it completed. And then we're going to have a delay step that I'll show you here shortly. That's listening for that data value for lead sourcing complete to get updated in order to progress them into the next workflow. And the next workflow would be data normalization started and completed lead scoring, funnel tracking, and then ultimately the whole lead management controller completes. So this step is really important. We could just call this the lead management status field. Again, this is a drop down field. This only has to exist in your marketing automation platform. It does not have to exist on Salesforce or another CRM if you're using a different CRM. Step one is to set that lead management started. Now, the next step that we're going to do is we're going to have a series of go to workflow steps. And so our process starts with lead sourcing, and I will be doing dedicated videos for each and every one of these. But when we start thinking about lead sourcing, that is the very first thing that we are going to call. And so we're going to go to workflow. And then what we don't want to have happen is we don't want this lead that gets entered into our lead management process to immediately go to lead sourcing and then immediately go to data normalization and immediately go to scoring. So what we do is we introduce this delay step. And so I'm going to build that out for us so that way you can see how this is done. And then it is just cloned for each of the steps of our process. So we go to workflow. We're going to add a step. We're going to add a delay step. And then that delay step is going to be an event occurrence. What we are looking for is we are looking for a property value to change. That property value that we are looking for is lead management. And so we are going to have the lead management status. And what we are looking for in this case, this workflow is a lead sourcing workflow. So we're going to select lead sourcing complete. Now, the very last step of the lead sourcing workflow is going to be a set property value, and it's going to set the property value to lead sourcing complete. So that's what we're listening for. We do not want this to delay for five days. That would be a very bad detriment if something 
went wrong in that workflow and somebody ended up getting stuck and it didn't just force its way through. I like to set this to five minutes because speed to lead is probably more important than making sure that your lead sourcing information is up to date. What we do here is that we're listening for this lead sourcing complete. Honestly, HubSpot moves so fast that usually this is this is like instantaneous within within seconds of going through the process. But if something happens, we just want there to be a fail safe that says, OK, if it, if it takes longer than five minutes, let's just force it along the process. And then down here, there is always this checkbox that gets selected where it will branch off. We don't need it to branch off if there's a delay. So we'll just uncheck that and then it will just continue to go through in its single path. So we create this delay step, and then after lead sourcing is completed, we will clone the previous workflow. We will update that to data normalization. Data normalization is going to take fields like country, and we will normalize United States to US or US to United States, whatever is necessary in order to ensure that your sync over into the CRM works efficiently and you have the right data. Um, this is also where we can normalize job title into job level and job department or job function, whatever nomenclature that you may be using. There's a lot of uses for, for the data normalization controller. So this one ends up becoming very, very powerful. Then what we're going to do is we are going to introduce another delay. And this time we are listening for data normalization to become complete. Once data normalization is completed, then we progress this down into calling the lead scoring workflow. And there's a lot that goes into lead scoring. We have a process that we use at CS2 that we actually really like, where, where we will set the program status in a field in the local program, and then that will tell us where to go. It's a really cool, it's a really cool process that we've built out that I'm excited to share with you all in a future video. In terms of the next step, we are listening for lead scoring to become complete. The last workflow that we have in this example is for our funnel tracking. Now, one of the products that we work on a lot with clients is our funnel architecture product. And we have a whole tracking solution that is built out in Salesforce. It's utilizing a custom object. It's incredibly powerful, allows for repeat visits. But what we always want to make sure that we're doing in HubSpot is setting when somebody is ready to work or when they are sales ready. That is typically what we will identify here in funnel tracking. We'll take all of our lead scoring and we'll identify, did they fit the criteria for lead scoring? If yes, let's progress them into a sales ready field. And then that will get sent over into Salesforce and then our process takes place. If you are not utilizing a custom object solution that's built out in Salesforce and you need to set all of your funnel tracking within your HubSpot system, you can use the HubSpot lifecycle fields. We just find that there's a lot more power when you have control over it. And so we like to build this out manually based upon field updates, lead scoring, and what have you. Go to workflow. We'll send it off to our funnel tracker, and we'll talk about how we go about building that in a future video as well. Subscribe if you're interested in keeping up to date with all of that. And then we are ultimately listening for funnel tracking to show up as complete. And once funnel tracking is complete, there's just a few operational fields that we like to set on these centralized controllers. First of all, lead management counter, we're going to increment that and increase that by one. This is a really powerful troubleshooting field. So if you start to see like 20, you might want to ask, why is this person going through the lead management controller 20 times? Maybe that's okay. Maybe they're doing 20 activities, or maybe there's a process problem and some automation problems that you might want to dig into and look at. This field is really helpful to understand when's the last time that somebody went through the lead management controller. By going through the lead management controller, we're going to set the latest date, and that becomes very useful. Maybe what you would want to do is have a semi-regular process, maybe once a year, where everybody goes through your lead management controller if they haven't recently, just to make sure that job titles are good, uh, your data normalization is up to date, your scoring's accurate, all of that. The last step of our process is we are setting a data value for lead management status to complete. So lead management equals complete. Why are we doing that last step? Funny that you should ask. What we are doing is this is an example of a web request filled out form workflow that you may have in your HubSpot instance. We want to make sure that everything that is locally being set is, first of all, calling the workflow. So you're going to do a workflow step to send out to the lead management process. And we'll, we will increase what is happening on this template as we work on uh, future videos with you. 
But right now, we just know that every single local program needs to call out to the lead management process. That makes sure that we get the right lead sourcing, data normalization, scoring, and funnel tracking. And then we are listening for that lead management status field to get updated to lead management complete. Now, I'm in a demo environment right now. I do not have this connected into Salesforce. But a step that we will commonly do after this is we will maybe do some routing if there's some routing that's going to be built out or what we're going to do is we are going to add them to a Salesforce campaign. And so at this step, we would say set Salesforce campaign and then the person is off to the races and able to get followed up with by the sales team, utilizing all of that wonderfully structured data that we worked on through the controller. So I hope that that was very helpful for you to just get a better understanding of how is this controller going to be built out? How am I going to call it in existing programs? There's a lot of steps to this process, and I'm really excited to take you through it. So if you are interested in digging into the very next step of this lead management process, which is lead sourcing, click on the video that's on the screen now, where we will walk you through the strategy of lead sourcing as we see it at CS2 along with some UTM tips in a future video, and then ultimately building it out in HubSpot. We look forward to seeing you. Thank you, and have a great day.